Well, this is 1982 through to 1983, over that Christmas period. The blockade started on the 13th of December and I was arrested on the 16th, um, spent Christmas in jail and uh, came back out with, um, and, and overall, uh, 6,000 people came down to the little village of Strawn on the west coast of Tasmania to go and join the blockade. 1,600 uh, were uh, arrested and 500 were jailed. And uh, the charge was um, lurking or loitering in the forests. It had been a manufactured law brought in hurriedly by the Premier of the state, Robin Gray, who was called the Whispering Bulldozer. He got elected uh, in May 1982 and within two months the bulldozers rolled into the Franklin Valley. That's him up there uh, and just behind him is a little man who's puppeteering the Premier. That's the head of the Hydroelectric Commission, Commissioner Russell Ashton. The Hydroelectric Commission ran Tasmania and its economy and uh, its future in those days. And across over on the other side is Joe Jockey Peterson, the Premier of Queensland, after whom Robin Gray patented himself. He came down to support the building of the dam uh, and afterwards um, spent a lot of time saying to me I shouldn't go to Queensland when I was uh, helping campaign to protect the Dane Tree Forest and the Barrier Reef to interfere in Queensland affairs. Up there is a High Court judge uh, next to the HEC building, uh, which uh, is the judge knocking on the door uh, effectively because this was painted before the decision by the High Court to save the Franklin. So the judge is about to uh, hold judgment over the Hydroelectric Commission. The F-111 fighter planes are uh, really interesting. They used to come down and fly over the jagged terrain of the Tasmanian wilderness for practice. But uh, the High Court dis case was coming and the, com the new Commonwealth Government needed to get direct evidence that the dam was being built, photographic evidence. New Attorney General Gareth Evans decided he would get the Air Force planes as part of their exercise to take pictures of the dam to get evidence. It, it led to a national furor. The Constitution says that the uh, armed services will never be used against a state. But uh, Gareth Evans made that decision um, and he got uh, called Beagles afterwards. And he also used the famous, what was called the streakers, lament or excuse. It seemed like a good idea at the time. <laughs> streakers being, of course, the uh, folk who run uh, occasionally naked into the middle of a uh, football ground. And over in that corner is the people for the dam. And they've got banners including uh, take your brown leeches with you. That comes out of a fa the most famous statement of the whole dams campaign, Robin Gray saying the Franklin is nothing but a brown leech ridden ditch. And when he said that, he, uh, people had seen this beautiful river on their television screens, there have been lots of pictures go out and they knew that uh, he was, he just didn't get it when it came to beautiful wild places full of wildlife. Well, talking of wildlife in wild places, here uh, Harold Thornton, who was this uh, eccentric character who grew up in Sydney, went to Amsterdam at the height of the flower power of the 1960s and came to Tasmania. I don't know whether he was attracted by the dam campaign, I suspect so and then painted this portrait in the wake of the blockade, but before the High Court decision. There's a little portrait of him in the forest. He's painted himself over there. Um, looks like the spoon that ran away with the dish. Here's a man's imagination, which has lifted himself up out of the forest in the style of many pre-photographic drawings of cities around the world. It has to been turned into somewhat of a cartoon or a caricature but that's telling a story. It was Harold's way of being able to tell a story as he saw it, and he's added humour to what was a very desperate situation down there. It, it sort of fits the eccentric, colourful character that Harold Thornton was, that he, he took this view, which seems uh, nobody else would think it up, but it now tells us a story in such a, a dramatic, but very careful way. There, well, it's not a story, there's a hundred stories in, in this picture. That's what's so good about it. 
Now he's painted myself three times in this picture, each time with a question mark in front. And that's probably because I was always um, philosophical about where's the world going to? If we destroy this, uh, if we can't save this, how can we ask people in poorer countries to save their rivers, their forests, their wildlife? But I was very embarrassed by this picture. Look, it's got what looks like a halo around it, and I know better than that. But uh, he painted it, and uh, I've got accommodated to it now. <laughs> I don't care. The good thing about it is, when you look into the trees, there there's, seems like there's hundreds of people in there. Well, there were. The whole operation upriver was a huge planning exercise. Over 50 people came from Western Australia, for example, to the blockade. There were people there from Britain and Germany and all states and territories, a lot of people from here in the ACT. And uh, they, they risked, uh, they thought, losing their passports if they were arrested, maybe losing their jobs. If they were in the public service, uh, certainly getting a, a reputation, a criminal record. So they're putting a lot on the line. Here's a policeman here chasing little green figures, little greenies through the forest. But over there behind me is another police officer's put her or his cap on the ground and inside is no dams, a little no dam sticker because a lot of the police were wanting to save the river as well. But they had to go down there uh, and carry out the orders to arrest the greenies. There's an interesting little section behind the police officer there about the practicalities. Wash your hands after you've been to the toilet. Make sure you put some lime in the pit. A lot of people living in a wild environment, you had to stop an outbreak of, of uh, disease. Big job to feed all those people. And over on that side of the picture is the Denison Star, the Hewan pine boat made by Al Reg Morrison, who'd been a piner up in these rivers. Uh, in his young days, coming up river with the tourists. And in the middle of the pictures, the JLM there, I went and saw Reg at the race course in Hobart uh, in the year leading up to this and said, Reg, we're going to be beaten here. Um, can you transport people up river to protest in the forest? And I thought he'd say no, because he, he had built up a huge reputation for his cruises worldwide. But he said, Yes, I'll bring the old cruise boat back in. Denny Hamill, who uh, is also in this picture, uh, brought that boat up and down river. Uh, more than a thousand people were brought up, or thousands. When you take into account journalists also brought up um, on shark cats, we got the abalone divers, it was off season, to use their very fast motorboats to bring journalists each morning across. Macquarie Harbour, 20 kilometres, up the river another 20 kilometres. They had to get back in those days by two o'clock so that their film could be flown out. Worldwide attention was focused on the Franklin and from Britain came television personality and self-described pommy botanist, Professor David Bellamy. That's him, that face in the tree there. And he was arrested on the Franklin and taken to Risdon Jail where he had his 50th birthday. And that was headlines all over the world and particularly in Britain. So it really made this blockade a matter of international attention. And he, like so many other people who I've met since, reckon being in this blockade was one of the best times of their lives. It was a, a sense of camaraderie which was very, very important because beneath all that, people were quite frightened about uh, facing the anger of Hydro workers had been, had been stirred up. Robin Gray had told uh, one fellow who was working on a bridge, the Bowen Bridge in Hobart, well, he'd been out to visit the workers and said he wouldn't mind giving them all baseball bats to go and deal with the Greenies over on the West Coast. And famously, he turned up at a uh, rally in the, the, the nearby town of Queenstown with boxing gloves on to take on the Greenies. So it, the message being sent to the people opposed to the dam was you can get stuck into these people. And it did lead to violence. It led to uh, people being uh, assaulted and uh, including yours truly, late one night, uh, I had four men come at me uh, with a uh, tire lever 
and um, I forgot my non-violent training and somehow or other I ended up with the tyre lever and the four men running. But uh, you know, that's self-preservation at work for you. But people did get beaten up and um, windows in the Wilderness Society buildings were smashed and uh, there was a fair deal of tension and fear about. Young folk uh, were out uh, in their rubber duckies getting in front of this machinery. Some of them were diving underneath, um, but uh, they were all being arrested. It, it stayed peaceful all the way. It was a violent invasion of these forests and the wildlife, but the, the strength of this protest was it stayed peaceful and while ever it did, there was a gathering feeling of support for it by the people of Australia. And in March, just after, as this blockade was tailing off, they changed the government. The Hawke government came in. It decided it was going to oppose Robin Gray and his dam building. That went to the High Court, the judges up there, and by four judges to three. On the 1st of July, 1983, they effectively made the decision the dam must stop. The wilderness must be saved for the whole of the world, according to the World Heritage Convention. So when this was painted, it looked very grim. But now I've got a smile on my face because what Harold depicted there was a huge peaceful protest with people from all over Australia, which ended up saving the river.